you know, I just said that, that uh, pronunciation is a physical activity, right? You're changing the way your mouth moves in order to make the sounds come out. So it's different from learning to write composition or from a reading class or a grammar class or a writing class. It's going to be really different from that. We really have to get physically involved. Are you ready to move? Yes? yes? Okay. Because if you're not, you're going to sound the same way the way you walked in as the way you walk out. And you want to change, right? You want to change. You want to modify your accent. You want to change the way you sound. Now, sometimes you'll hear the phrase accent reduction, accent reduction. And so, you know, it, people sometimes think of that because you want to reduce your foreign accent. So this is the same thing. What, what I'm trying to do is I like to use the word modification because, you know, you change your accent. And I sometimes change my accent. I have taught in different parts of the world. For example, when I taught in Hong Kong, which is used to be British, right? So the people in Hong Kong have a slightly British accent. So I started speaking that way to blend in with the people of that area. So I modified my accent for that group. Now, some of you may speak English at home or with your coworkers in a particular accent. And you can keep that or you can modify it as you like. So one of the things I'd like to do is to tell you what you can do to modify your accent. And you need to be able to, to do that. Now, I also want to let you know that it's a good thing to have a mirror. You know that? Did I tell you to bring a mirror? Yeah. Did you bring your mirror? Yeah. Do you have a phone with a camera on it? Yeah. Okay, you could use that too, because that's great. You have that? All right, bring it out for now, because let's not be shy about this. Let's look. Let's really look at ourselves in the mirror or in your iPhone with the camera on and so you can see what I'm talking about okay do you need a mirror or you have one okay great don't be shy all right I know you usually don't go around holding a mirror in front of you right but in order to make changes in the way you sound the way you pronounce the way you speak it's good to know what you look like, right? What you look like. Okay, so let me ask you, what do, what do football players do? Do they watch the video after, of their game after? Yes, of course, because they want to see their plays. They want to see their action. They want to see if their legs move this way or that way. They know, want to know about the mechanics of their movement. So this is what we're, we're, we're athletes of the mouth, all right? Athletes of the mouth. Now, hold the mirror up to you just so. So you can see my lips over your mirror, but you can also see me in, uh, sorry, you can see me over your mirror and you can see yourself in your mirror, right? Okay, so some of you have a large mirror. Good, very nice. And some of you have a small mirror. Now, if you don't have big enough mirror, like my mirror is kind of small, you can always have a bigger one. Do you want to borrow my mirror? All right, all right, there you go. Okay, now take a look at your mouth. Open it, go, ah, 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 really wide, stretch it. And let me hear some sounds, say, ah, 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 let me hear it, ah, 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 okay, now let me hear, oh, 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 look at it, oh, 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 oh. Stretch it, feel it, e, e, stretch it, e, e, ooh, 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 ooh. You feel your lips stretching out like this, right? Okay, nice. How do you, how do your lips feel? How do you, you're a little bit warmer than before? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, you know what? Usually I don't speak like this, but I'm doing it now because I want to show you what a good exercise this is. All right, now, you hold your mirror up and you try to make as many funny faces as you can. So stretch your mouth. Come on, stretch it forward and back. All right, stretch it forward and back and round and around. Stretch it, now stretch it. Oh, look at yourself. Oh, how many funny. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, okay. Stretch your face. Now, this is really good for you because if you stretch your muscles, then it'll be a lot easier for you to move at the time you need to, okay? Because when you're speaking, you have to move everything really quickly, and if you don't move it quickly, then the word is all finished and you haven't made any changes, all right? So 
this kind of exercise is good for your, your cheeks. Do your cheeks feel warmer now? Yeah. Okay, now, some of you are doing this and some of you feel a little shy. Don't feel shy. All right, in my class, it's good to feel funny. All right? Feel funny, <laughs> act funny. If you keep doing the same thing that you have been doing for many, many years, yeah. you're not going to change. But if you try to do these things, like warming up like this, then when I teach you how to move your lips and speak in a certain way, it'll be a lot easier. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Do any of you do physical exercise, you know, like you run or you jump or you do, you go to the gym or you play any sports? Raise your hand. How many of you do that? You do? Okay, good. What kind of sport do you do or exercise? Oh my God. It's like I do or I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It's kind of noisy. Taekwondo? Krav Maga. It's Israeli sport. And it's Israeli martial art? Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. So, um, do you do any warm-up exercises before yeah, you do your... Of course. Yes, you do. Why? Oh, because otherwise I would have some problems. Otherwise you'll have problems. Do you think you might... If you don't stretch, you might suffer... You might injure yourself. Right. Okay. So, a good thing to do to stretch is... Be, a, a reason is to build up your flexibility. Now... I haven't heard anybody yet injure themselves speaking English. <laughs> not yet. So, in that way, we're not analogous. We're not, it's not a total analogy. But it does help you move your tongue and your lips and your teeth in new positions if you do these kinds of exercise. Now, the funny, the easiest thing to know is that you don't need anything extra in order to do these exercises. You don't need to suit up. You don't need to pay a gym fee. You don't need any equipment. All you need to do is dare yourself to look in your mirror and say, I'm going to make funny faces. I'm going to pull my face. Scary, scary. Okay, well, I thought it all right. So don't, don't be shy. Let's do it right now. Come on. Don't just look at me. No fair looking without doing, all right? So I want to see your faces moving as well as mine, all right? All right, that's good, right? Now, let's do another thing. What about, the, what's inside our mouth? Oh. Our teeth and our tongue. Right, all right, teeth and tongue. Teeth, okay, good, and tongue. Now, our teeth are basically going to stay in the same place in their gum ridge, but our tongue can move, and that's the thing. Tongue is a big muscle, and the tongue is the one that we need to use to control. So let's do some flexibility exercises by sending the tongue out. Let's say this hand, my hand, let's say this is my tongue, and these are my teeth. So I'm going to have the tongue go out, hit the teeth on the way out, and then pull it back in. Hit the teeth on the way out and pull it back in. So we're going to go, look in your mirror. And let the, let the tongue hit the teeth on the way out and then not on the way in. Don't be shy. Look at your mirror. Don't just look at me. Okay, stop for a moment. Does your tongue feel a little bit tired? Okay, now that means you haven't done enough. But you know, like if I'm your personal, consider me my, your personal trainer. Have you ever had a personal trainer in the gym? Like you go to a 20 hour, 4 hour fitness or you go to a gym and they tell you what to do? Okay, think of me that way. I'm your personal trainer. Right now you did that for maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. Every time you try it, try to lengthen it a little more. All right, let's try another set. Okay, good. Now look at me. Some of you are going out and out and out, but you're not touching. Okay, so I want you to be able to go and then come back in. So put your tip of the tongue on the teeth on the way out and then bring it back in. All right, pay attention. Look at your mirror and make sure that your tongue is doing that. Ready? Begin. Okay, stop for a moment. A little bit tired? Okay, all right. That's good. It's a good, it's a good tired, right? All right, now, some of you are having a little trouble with the lips. You're going... Okay, so in this one, we don't do the lips. Only relax the lips and only use the tongue. All right, now see if you can pick up little distance and put your tongue out a little bit farther. Some of you go, see if you can do it a little bit farther. All right, so look at the distance. Ready, begin. 
Rest. Rest a little bit. Okay, good. How about this? Now, let's see if we can pick up some speed. See if you can move your tongue a little bit faster. Ready? Begin. Okay, take a rest. Okay, now you're probably feeling something all the way from me. Your tongue is attached way back here, right? So you should feel it. Now, if you don't feel it, you might be dead. Oh, no, 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 you're okay. <laughs> you feel it, you feel it, you feel it. Good. If you're feeling it, you're alive. Your tongue is there. And you need to do that often because the more often you do it, the more flexible, flexible your tongue will be. The more flexible your tongue is, the easier it will be to put it in the place that you need to put it at the time you need to make a particular sound. Now, a particular sound in the stream of speech is very, very short. So, if you have to think about it and think where do you put your tongue, by that time your conversation partner will have gone away, like the guy who just walked out the door. You know what I'm saying? So, if you make your tongue more flexible, it'll be a lot easier for you to move it in the right place. Also, when we were doing these exercises with your mouth, you know, when you move your lips in a certain direction, it will become easier for you to put all that together because sometimes you need to pay attention to where you put your tongue in relation to high and low, or in relation to the teeth, right? You need to also be aware of where you put your lips. Ba ba ba, fa fa fa, ma ma ma, right? Okay, now what else is there? Tongue, tongue is up there, teeth are here, mouth here. Now, it's not only about the mouth, it's also about your vocal cords. Put your hand on your vocal cords, please. Not exactly on the cords, but on your neck, because your cords are inside. Don't go far in that. Just feel the outside. Say, ah, mmm. These are called voiced sounds because you vocalize you vibrate the vocal cords do you feel it so these are called what voiced sounds voiced they are voiced all right voiceless sounds don't don't require the motion of the vocal cords you don't vibrate your vocal cords for a voiceless sound so Compare with ah. Uh, feel the difference? Right? Okay. How about? Compare with. Feel the difference? Compare with. Feel the difference? Voiced, voiceless. Okay, so that's another thing that we need to know when we're talking about it. So we have to be aware of how we use our vocal cords. Now, <clears throat> Now, below that, we've got inside our chest cavity some other important organ. What is that? The lungs. Okay, so we don't usually talk about lungs when we talk about accent, but I do because how are you going to get the sound out of your head? You have to breathe. Exactly. You have to breathe in, you have to breathe out. Now, have you ever noticed that English is a very breathy language? We use a lot of... Okay, some, some speakers from other languages think... English is very spitty, and we spit a lot. We have, we have sharp t, p, k, right? And in some languages, the sounds are a little bit softer. We say, a, a piece of paper. I, I want a piece of paper. But if you say it like that, you have an accent, right? So people who ask for a piece of paper, you know it's not an English accent. Maybe it's an accent that the language, you don't use the puff of air. But in English, a puff of air is used at the beginning of stressed syllables. So we say, paper, <coughs> a piece of paper. And that has to start from 
the lungs. All right. So another thing we'll be talking about is how to use your lungs to support the breath that needs to be emitted at the appropriate time when you make a particular sound. Okay, and that may differ from one language to another, even if your language uses the same alphabetical letter, right? So in Spanish, we say papel with a P, but in English, we say paper with a P, stronger, all right? So we have letters that are on paper, but they're different from the sounds that we emit, right? Another thing is we have some people who are stuck here. There is something, in, well, first of all, in English we have <clears throat> six stop sounds that belong to the language. They're phonemes of the language. T, d, p, b, k, and g. These are the ones that are in the language as phonemes. There's another stop that's not in the language. If you ask any other native speaker, they won't have any idea what you're talking about, even English teachers because, you know, this is a specialty of English that I'm teaching you. And that is the glottal stop. The glottis is in here, and it closes up very early. Not like the bilabial stops, b and p. Not like the lingual dental stops, d and t, right? But the glottal stop is back here. And if you speak Vietnamese, do you speak Vietnamese? Yes. Then you have glottal stops in your language all the time. You may not even know that, but it is in part of the tone of your language. Anybody speak Cantonese? Yes, okay. So Cantonese also uses glottal stops in words, at the end of words. So sometimes what happens if you speak another language, you transfer, you know, you transfer a lot of the movement of your language, the sound of your language into speaking English, and you may not really know it, but I do. So I'm going to try to help you with those aspects and try to help you say, okay, that's fine in your language, but in English we don't do that. What we do is something else, okay? So I, I won't teach you all of that today, but I'm just trying to give you an example of the types of things that I can help you with in terms of the technical things that are doing with your, usually just the upper body, in order to pronounce. We don't really use our feet too much, but all of the upper body. So don't consider just the mouth, also consider all the way from your lungs out, okay?